As I was working through the scripts of my recent SSH and Tmux videos, I found myself wanting to drop in mentions of my favorite command line tools here and there. But those videos were already long enough, so here we are, seven essential command line tools to improve your productivity. All the tools mentioned in this video should be available in the package manager for your platform. For Mac, that's definitely Homebrew, and probably Mac ports too. If you're not using a package manager on Mac, then check out my Homebrew video for more on that. I've excluded three important tools from the list in this video, ZSH, Starship, and Tmux, because they were all covered in depth in my SSH and Tmux setup videos. Just know that when you see my shell in the demos, you're seeing ZSH and you're seeing Starship. Now onto the main list. First up is EXA. A common command line task is file management, and I find myself using the ls command a lot to display the contents of a directory. But the default behavior of ls is pretty underwhelming, so I like to replace it with EXA. Straight out of the box, EXA gives a much nicer display and uses a configurable color scheme to highlight the types of the files shown in the listing. So images are shown in this kind of dark purple, videos in blue, archives in red, temporary files in gray, and so on and so on. I like EXA so much that in my shell configuration .zshrc, I set an alias so that ls actually just runs EXA. And also, since I much prefer long listing rather than grid listing, I add another alias, ll, to get a nicely formatted full list. I also use EXA as a replacement for the tree command. By aliasing tree to EXA dash dash tree, I get a nice tree view of my files, and I can even combine the tree output with the long output to get a very dense information display. In addition to listing directory content, I often want to display the contents of a file, and the built-in cat command is okay at this, but we can do much better with bat. Bat provides content-aware highlighting and line numbers right out of the box, which makes browsing code and config files in the shell much easier. And with the dash P flag, P for plain, you can switch off this behavior and get back to a much more cat-like behavior. Like I did with EXA, I like to alias bat as cat, so years of muscle memory still give me the nice behavior. Next up, we have ripgrep, which is a great tool for searching your files for specific text or patterns. The command for ripgrep is rg, and simply running it in a directory with the text you want to search for will show you all files containing that text in that directory and its subdirectories. Here I'm searching for Raspberry and I can see all files in my org directory that have that word in. But notice on this line that we've only matched Raspberry in lowercase, exactly as we entered it. Using rg-i, we get case intensive searches and now we're finding all instances of Raspberry regardless of the case. For more complex searches, ripgrep supports something called regular expressions or regex. If you're not familiar with regex, it's like a mini programming language for describing text patterns that tools like ripgrep can then match on. As an example, when I'm editing my videos, I keep track of the timestamp markers I want and also the timestamps where I want to put B-roll over my A-roll. I can use ripgrep with the dash E flag to search for things that look like timestamps. So two numbers followed by a colon followed by two numbers. And you don't always want to search all files in a directory structure. Ripgrep allows you to supply what's called a glob, basically a pattern for matching against file paths to limit the scope of your search. So my org directory has two subdirectories, TC and ROM. And if I want to just search for Raspberry in the ROM directory and only in org files in that directory, I can use a glob with dash dash glob of ROM slash asterisk.org. The asterisk is the variable part of the pattern. So this glob matches any org file in the ROM directory. If we try to switch ROM to TC in that glob pattern, we won't find anything. The TC directory has no content of its own. The content lives in subdirectories. We can extend our glob to search for all org files anywhere under the TC directory using double asterisk. So a note here, I'm enclosing the glob patterns in either double or single quotes. And this is because most shells like ZSH that I'm using support some form of glob patterns. And without the quotes, the shell attempts to process the glob and passes the results to ripgrep, causing a bunch of confusion. Another great tool I like to keep around for finding files and searching through text is Fuzzy Finder or FZF. Fuzzy Finder is extremely powerful, so I can't show everything it can do here, but let me show you two use cases that should whet your appetite to find out more. Firstly, you can use Fuzzy Finder directly at the command line to search for a file when you don't quite know the name. So I'm in a directory containing the source code for the TechCraft website. And I know there's a file in here somewhere for an iPad productivity video that I did. And with FZF, I can just type iPad productivity, and the list of possible files is immediately narrowed down. The more specific my search term, the more the result set is narrowed down. But notice I'm not actually typing anything that closely resembles the actual file names. That's where the fuzzy in Fuzzy Finder comes in. These are fuzzy matches, rough approximations based on what you might want and not what you actually typed in. 
Where I use SRF the most is in searching my command history. So in the shell, Control R allows you to search your history. And with SRF installed, you get fuzzy matching on that history. So just typing in EX shows up all of the X commands we saw earlier. And if I add tree to my search, we get just the X of tree commands. And enter brings that command to the shell prompt and then enter runs it. So normally you move about the file system using CD, the change directory command, and this is a perfectly fine command, but I like to replace CD with Zoxide or Zoxide, which provides a richer feature set. So I'm in the home directory here and I'm going to switch to the directory where my scripts are stored and then switch to the source code for the TechCraft website. I'm using Z, which is the command name for Zoxide in place of CD. The first time you visit a directory with Zoxide, it remembers the directory path and you can switch to it using just a portion of the path. So to switch back to my content directory, I can run zcont and I'm back. And running ztech takes me back to the source code directory. It is possible to have name clashes and zoxide handles this quite nicely. So let's say I create a new directory called technology and visit it with zoxide. Now ztech has two possible matches. Each time I run it, it will cycle to the next match. And I can also type ztech then a space and press tab to bring up all the possible matches. And you might notice here that Zoxide is using FZF for the menu. I commonly find myself switching back and forth between two directories and Zoxide has a shortcut for that. It's Z space dash, which takes you back to the directory you were last in. Since Zoxide is a complete replacement for CD, I also like to alias CD to Z. And then I also alias ZZ to be Z space dash to make the toggling easier. So next up we have enter, which is an amazing utility. With enter, you can watch files and when they change, you can execute commands. This is really useful if you're working on coding and especially if you're learning to code, I think this is a very useful command. So let me show you what I mean. Here I have two panes open and in the right pane, I've got my editor in the left pane, I've got just an empty shell. And I want to say with enter, whenever the source code changes, please run the source code. So let's use enter to do that. And then next up in my editor, I'm just gonna keep changing the code. And every time I change and save the file, you can see that enter is rerunning it. So I can quickly see the output from my code as I change it. So I've saved the best for last, Midnight Commander or MC. So MC is a dual pane file manager that's been around since like 1994, and he's still in active development. MC is a huge program with a ton of features, but let me show you some of the basics that I think will pique your interest. So first up along the bottom here, we have commands with numbers. These are for the function keys on your computer. So F5 is copy, F6 is rename, and F7 is make dear, so on and so on. And we have two panes, both showing the contents of a directory. And currently they're showing the same directory, which is my home directory. And I can switch between the panes with tab. I can move up and down with the arrow keys or with control P, control N for previous and next. And if you're not using these shortcuts, they're worth learning. They have significantly less hand movement than the arrow keys. I can also search for something in this directory with opt S. So I'll search for temp to go to my temp directory and then hitting enter, we change into that directory, but only in this panel. So I have a few unused directories in here that I can clean up using F8. And now I want to start creating some new directories. So just copying some files around. F7 allows me to make a new directory and I want to copy the contents of the X demo directory into this new directory. This is super easy in MC. So first up, I'll put the right pane into the same directory as the left pane using opt I to synchronize the two panes and then come into the new directory with enter. Now I'll tab over to the right pane, move to the exit demo directory and hit F5 to copy and then OK. And now we have a copy of our folder in our brand new directory. MC does take a little while to learn, but it's worth the investment. I've been using it regularly since around 2007. And in that time, loads of software has come and gone, but MC remains and delivers real benefits every day. There's so much more I could show you about Midnight Commander. So if you are interested in seeing a full video, then do let me know in the comments below. So that's seven essential command line tools that I use pretty much every day of every week. And I hope you'll find some of these tools a worthwhile addition to your workflow. And I hope you found this video useful. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe and hit the bell as well so you don't miss out on any future content. Thanks for watching.